We just need to do a little sewing and we'll be finished. Let's change this surface back to a solid. Now unhide the head or merge it in if it's a different file. Select the ear and the reference and move them into position. We might want to make it a little smaller and line it up. That looks about right. We'll mold the ear to match the surface. Now delete the reference of the ear. I'll hide the reference of the head and we'll decide how to blend the ear in. Let's delete a few segments to make room for the ear. Right away we can fuse these points and use them as they are. Next we'll complete our wire cage. Rather than do that, I think this is more evenly spaced. Use spline to see how it's welded. We'll need to fix that, and these should continue into the ear. Select and detach the splines we want to change. This should give us a smooth transition between the head and ear. I can attach these and do them at the same time because they're not overlapping. Select the original and attach the others. This way we won't break our reference. Let's see what we have. We have one crease here where it overlaps, so we'll just spread that out. Perfectly blended. Let's give them a jawline. We don't need the reference anymore, so we'll delete it. If we needed to, we could always extract a new one. To change to a full spline, make a mirror copy and line it up. 
I changed it to world first because we are in a user view. We don't want a duplicate spline down the center, so we'll delete one of them before we use attach. To absolutely make sure there's no seam, you could strategically go through and weld the two halves together. I think we did a good enough job not to worry about it. Many people will use a relax modifier to round everything out and cover up mistakes. I don't like this approach because it dulls areas that you may have wanted to be sharp. Keep in mind that surface tools can also be used to create inorganic objects with sharp corners.